Hey guys, how are you all doing? This is my predictions for UFC Fight Night 35, Rockhold versus Philippou. Let's get right into it. This is taking place January 15th, which is a Wednesday. There's some decent fights here, uh, nothing to get too crazy about, but let's go through the fights. First up on the online preliminary card, uh, we have two prelims here. These are the fights that used to be on Facebook and YouTube, but these fights are now going to be exclusively on Fight Pass. So it's another reason to to fork over the 10 bucks a month if you're a diehard fan, but this is Charlie Bren at Welterweight Charlie the Spaniard Brenneman versus Benil Dariush. You gotta go with the Spaniard. Don't know anything about the other guy, but uh, Brenneman's a tough guy. Uh, not not a great striker. I haven't really followed haven't really followed what he's done outside of the UFC since his release, but let's see here. He's on a four fight win streak. Actually, he had three of his four past wins have been submissions, a rear naked choke, Peruvian necktie, and arm triangle choke, so uh, maybe he's uh, more going after the finish more now, but just a tough guy, and I gotta go, I gotta go for the Spaniard, so I'm gonna take Brenneman. Next up, Vince Pichel versus Garrett Whiteley. Pichel, a veteran of Tough 15, I think it was, Tough Live, a season with Cruz in favor. Um, I believe this guy's only fight in the UFC since the Ultimate Fighter was against uh, Rustam Kabalov, where he got knocked out by suplexes, but on the show, I remember him being a pretty pretty decent guy. I think he got up to the semi-finals and lost. I believe he had a win by arm triangle choke and uh, some decent kickboxing. Garrett Whiteley got finished by I believe it was Alan Patrick in his last fight. Um, I have to go with Pichel just because we've seen more of him and you know we've seen him compete on the Ultimate Fighter. I have to go with Pichel. I think he'll be able to get a finish somehow. Garrett Whiteley in his last fight uh, got knocked out. Just didn't seem... I don't know. It didn't seem like he had any big weapon in his game, but again, a pretty unknown guy. Next up to the Fox Sports 1 preliminary card at flyweight, Alptekin, Oskilich versus Louis Smolka. Never heard of Smolka, but Oskilich, uh, I'm really surprised he's on this card. I'm not sure if he took this on short notice, but he just fought a few weeks ago. He fought on the last Fox card, um, beat Uye Noyama. Showed some decent wrestling and top control in that fight, so I'm going to take Oskilich. Uh, just just on the fact that we've seen him compete before and Smolka's unknown. Next up in middleweight, Trevor Smith taking on Brian Houston. Trevor Smith in his last fight had a back and forth brawl with Ed Herman. I thought that fight was just super close, um, but it went to Ed Herman and Brian Houston got railroaded by Derek Brunson in his last fight. Uh, but has a very strong physique, very big muscular guy, but still extremely unknown. And I'm just going to go with Trevor Smith again. Seen him fight before, put up a real t a real tough fight against a good guy like Herman. So I'm going to go with Trevor Smith. Next up, lightweight Isaac Valley Flag taking on Elias Silverio. Um, I remember Silverio, he fought back in one of the September Fight Night cards, I think it was the one in Brazil, I think it was the um, 
Bader versus Teixeira fight. And he just put on... He, he fought Zhao Zafarino, and that fight was so boring. Both guys looked pretty unskilled. Silverio basically defended the takedowns, and he had his back against the fence most of the time and just was hitting him with shots that looked like they were completely ineffective. So I have to go with Valley Flag. He has a win over Eves Edwards. Um, I remember him coming forward, being pretty aggressive in that fight. Uh, didn't really look like he ever hurt Edwards. So I'm going to be pretty upset and pretty shocked if Valley Flag loses this because I just thought, again, Silverio looked really just looked like a very low level MMA fighter in his last fight and yeah Valley Flag has a win over Eves Edwards so I'm going to go with Valley Flag by decision next up lightweight Ramsey Nijum taking on Justin Edwards both tough veterans Just Edward, Justin Edwards from Tough 13 and Ramsey Nid actually yeah from the same season Tough 13 Ramsey Nijem has been inconsistent up and down coming off of a submission loss to James Vick. Actually on a two-fight losing streak, lost to James Vick and got knocked out by Miles Jury. So two pretty, pretty dominant finishes for him on the losing end, obviously. But he has had some decent performances before that. Had a finish against C.J. Keith, beat Joe Proctor, beat Danny Downs. Um, he's mostly just been taking on other top veterans. Here's another one. And Justin Edwards, guy who's had some really, really bright moments since the, since the tough show, especially submitting Josh Near, but it's also been pretty inconsistent. Um, just got ran over by Brandon Thatch in his last fight. Edwards, more of a wrestler, grappler, has a bit of boxing and Nijum, kind of a funky wrestler. Um, also has developed his boxing game a bit, but on the feet, I think Nijum has more speed. And the wrestling game, I think. I think Nijim's wrestling is going to be a bit better. And I'm going to pick Nijim to get on top here and finish Edwards at some point by ground and pound. Onto the main card, featherweight Cole Magarinho Miller taking on Sam Cecilia. I think Cole Miller has just been a huge disappointment ever since coming down to featherweight. Um, he's a guy I really respected at lightweight. Got a lot of dominant finishes there but coming to featherweight just very inconsistent and it's had a lot of very lackluster fights his last fight against Andy Ogle I thought he barely won in that third round Ogle was really beating him up um, lost to Manny Gamburian in his fight before that has a win over Bart Palaszewski, submission win. And before that, lost decisions to both Nam Finn and Steven Seiler, uh, guys who were greatly less experienced than him, especially at that point, and um, lost to both those guys just... I remember those fights pretty well, too. He just looks like he's lost a lot of fire. Um, he doesn't go after it on the feet the way he used to when he fought Ross Pearson. And on the ground, uh, this guy is a really talented submission guy. I remember that submission he pulled off on Dan Lozon, but he gets on the ground, he gets in the armbar position, and he just sits there. Um, he did that against Andy Ogle, and I believe against Gamburian too he was in spots where it looked like he could just finish the arm bar but just kind of sat there and you know let's the, let the guy ride out top position on him and Sam Cecilia on the other hand is a guy who um, I thought for a while was one of the worst fighters in the UFC just 
a brawler who rarely landed shots and didn't use wrestling. And he had two losses to Honey Jason and then Moxie, Maximo Blanco. And his last fight really turned things around against um, Godofredo Pepe Castro. Came in with an actual game plan, used wrestling, took took him down, and then just uh, pounded him. Only took a few shots to put out Case Castro. And, you know, all logic says to pick Miller. Far more experienced, far better skilled, both on the, on the ground and, I believe, the feet, too. At least the old Cole Miller was, but... I think uh, Sam Cecilia is going to be able to get Cole Miller, Cole Miller to the ground. And, you know, like we saw in the last fight with Ogle, Cole Miller will just sit on his back. Um, you know, if he gets close to a submission, and, you know, he'll be content uh, letting the guy be on top. He'll try, he'll go for a submission um, and lose, be comfortable losing position. And I think Cecilia is going to get on top and just pound away again and finish Miller. And on the feet, Miller's going to have a big reach advantage, but I think Cecilia is going to make it a brawl and just crack Miller if it's on the feet, even though Cecilia um, hasn't really been able to connect with the strikes in his previous fights when he tries to make them brawls. But it's, it's, a, it's an upset. It's a tough pick, but I'm going to go with Cecilia here. I think it's going to finish Cole Miller. Next up at flyweight, John Moraga taking on Dustin Ortiz. Ortiz still a guy we don't really know much about. At least I don't. Um, his last fight in the UFC, his only fight, took on Jose, Jose No Chance Maria. Uh, was in some good scrambles, able to get top position, kind of stay in control positionally on the ground and then frankly finish the shot finish the fight with illegal shots to the back of the head so don't really know too much about his game and but Moraga on the other hand you know challenged for the title in his last fight was able to knock down Demetrius Johnson had two really good finishes before that against uh Cariasso and um yeah, who was the other guy? Ulysses Gomez. Showed good hands in that Gomez fight and showed a bit of submission prowess in the Cariasso fight. So I have to go with Moraga here. I think he's going to finish Ortiz on the feet. And uh, especially coming off of that last loss to the champ, Demetrius Johnson, just getting dominated with the wrestling game and eventually submitted. I think he's going to be real hungry to come back and make a statement here. So I have to go with Moraga. I'm going to TKO Ortiz. Um, I'd say second round. Next up, a middleweight, Yo Romero taking on Derek Brunson. Yo Romero won his last fight against Hani Mar Marquez, and... He was able to finish him late in the third round, although he was taken down a few times in that fight, which surprised a lot of people. I think Romero's an Olympic wrestler. And then in his debut fight, uh, knocked out Clifford Starks with a flying knee, which I thought was really impressive. But again, in the Honey Marks fight, got taken down a few times, and Marquez, uh, a pretty good... You know, he's been successful with the takedown and staying on top of people in the UFC. But I think that Derek Brunson is a better wrestler than Hani Marquez. And I think he'll be able to win this, taking down Yo Romero and holding him there. Uh, kind of like he did to Chris Lieben. Yo Romero on the feet, though, I'd give him a big advantage. I think he's got a big power advantage, although Brunson in his last fight... Um, put out Brian Houston on his feet with a head kick and then choked him out. But I'm going to go with Brunson to win by decision here. I think he gets it done with the wrestling. 
Next up at Bantamweight, TJ Dillashaw taking on Mike Easton. I'm really high on Dillashaw, and I really like the guy. Um, like his fighting style and his skill set. Mike Easton, I think, has been a little disappointing. He's on a two-fight losing streak to Brad Pickett and Rafael Asuncao. In the Asuncao fight, he just looked unwilling to engage and never pulled the trigger. And then the Brad Pickett fight, um, it was more competitive, but Pickett was basically able to get the occasional takedown and just um, edged him, edged him out in the in the boxing battle. But he has had some good performances, especially against Ivan Menjavar. Uh, really dominated him with the boxing on the feet. But Dillashaw's just got the more complete game. He's got he's got the takedowns. He's got the wrestling. He's got the submission game. Uh, Dillashaw coming off of a loss to Hafiel Asuncao in his last fight. And Asuncao, um, or Dillashaw gave Asuncao a much tougher fight than he gave Easton, but I think that was because Asuncao, or Dillashaw was willing to engage much more than Easton, but Dillashaw's aggressive on his feet. You know, since, uh, Ludwig came over to Alpha Male, he had those two knockout losses, knockout wins. Um, last year, I think a head kick knockout and um, another uh, st striking knockout against Hugo Viana and Issei Tamora. But um, I think the guy's real talented and has a pretty complete all around game. And Mike Easton, we haven't really seen him use too much wrestling in the UFC. So I'm going to take Dillashaw here, and I think he wins a decision. Easton's a tough guy, hasn't been finished in the UFC. Um, when, I wouldn't be too surprised if Dillashaw could you know, get him down and submit him, or even hurt him on the feet, but I like Dillashaw to win the decision. Next up, middleweight to co-main event, Lorenz Larkin taking on Brad Tavares. Uh, to me, this is about Brad Tavares' volume striking against Larkin's power and athleticism. Tavares, he's looked solid in most of his fights, although in his last fight he was taken down by Robert McDaniel in that third round and uh, basically held there for most of the round. Has had some good performances against Tom Watson, Dongi Yang, Ricky Fukuda, but none of these guys are even really mid-level guys, basically low-level fighters, and Lorenz Larkin, I think, has fought, well, he has fought clearly better competition in Francis Carmont, has a win over Robbie Lawler, fought King Mo even, which I was unaware of till right now. So the guy's been in there with better competition, um, you know, has a win in the UFC, over Chris Camozzi. Um I don't think... I think he should be more aggressive on his feet, though, than he is. I think he's really talented, um, very athletic. I think he showed good power in that Camozzi fight, but doesn't throw it at a really high volume, and um, Tavares is in your face, coming forward all the time, throws a high volume. Hasn't shown big power, though. Um, but, so, kind of a tough one to call, but, again, I'm going to take Larkin. I think he's going to be able to hurt Tavares more than you know, Tavares will be able to hurt Larkin. Again, power versus volume, and I'm taking Larkin probably by decision, I'd say. And the main event, Luke Rockhold, middleweight fight, Luke Rockhold taking on uh, Costas Philippou. Rockhold coming off of that knockout, devastating knockout loss to Belfort and Costas Philippou. In retrospect, I think this guy's win streak, you know, was a bit overrated. Took on really low level well, he took on some decent guys, but other guys pretty low to mid level guys in the UFC. He was on a five fight win streak at one point. You know, Jorge Rivera, Jared Hammond. 
the win over Court McGee was probably the one I was most impressed with. And then beat Ricky Fukuda and Tim Boach. I don't count, I don't uh, give much weight to the Tim Boach fight. Tim Boach was uh, badly injured in that fight. And, um, yeah, I don't really count that win for Philippou. The only other finish he had, which was against um, Jared Hammond. And, yeah, Jared Hammond was a low level fighter. So, Rockhold, I think he's faced the better guys. Tim Kennedy um, had the win over Jacare Souza, although I think that fight could have easily been scored for Souza. On the feet, um, I think Philippou has a bit of a power advantage. <clears throat> although technical striking, I think uh, Rockhold has the advantage. And wrestling, I think Rockhold has a clear advantage. Um, Philippou is just uh, badly out wrestled in his last fight against Francis Carmont. And um, I think Rockhold could win with the wrestling. I think he could win it on the feet too. Although I'm not, <clears throat> I'm not too familiar with Rockhold. I've only seen his fights against Belfort and uh, Tim Kennedy. I think I saw a little bit of the Souza fight and the Jardine fight. Is you know not can't really take away too much from that. But I'm gonna go with uh, Rockhold here. I think he's really hungry to make a statement. He's still kind of in title contention country and Philippou I don't know um, he was on a again on a good win streak for a while but you know that came to an end in his last fight against Carmont and I don't really know if he has much else to offer here again I'd give him the power advantage but Rockhold I think has a far more complete game so I'm gonna go with Rockhold by decision so those are my predictions for UFC Fight Night 35, Rockhold versus Philippou. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Really appreciate it. Please like the video, comment, subscribe, and I'll be back with my review for this fight after it takes place. Take care, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.